The Lucas Oil IHBA Drag Boat Series. We're in Chowchilla, California for the T-Shirts Unlimited Super Nationals presented by RNL Carriers. Look, one thing you don't want to hit when you're going 200 plus miles an hour is debris. All the debris has been cleared off the racetrack. That's one of the enemies racers are facing today. The second, it's Mother Nature. The heat index close to 100 degrees in the Central Valley. That usually brings strong winds. How strong? We're all going to find out together next. Great drag race to close out the day. Shelby will take the win. That's a ball in the far lane. Man, that thing approaches Swanson, and then it gets pretty ugly right there. Yeah, we get serious about racing. There's no doubt about it. When the lift goes down, I'm there to beat him. There's a lot of tough competition out here. We're fixing that British Am 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 on them. That's Texas. We'll go fast. It's a beautiful day on the water. It's hot outside, but the action is going to be intense here with the Lucas Oil IHBA Drag Boat Racing Series at the T-Shirts Unlimited.com Super Nationals presented by RL Carriers. Ken Stout, Alan Reinhardt, and Terry Boyd bringing you all the action here today, and that action will include the kings of the sport, Top Fuel, Hydro, Nitro, Methane, we've got it, and also the seven-second hitters of ProMod. We'll start things off with the Pro Modified category. Let's take a look at qualifying and Alan Reinhardt. Man, these guys were on it. Seven seconds is the index. You adjust your boat to try to run that number, and how about five of the six qualifiers were within a tenth of a second, including number one qualifier Gary Bauer, who just missed by eighth thou. Before we go to the water, let's go behind the scenes. Anyone who says racers don't have a big heart, they have not met Vic Esposito because for him, Pro Mod is all about family, friends, and who is this guy on your boat right here? That's my son, Luciano, and he comes with us to all the races. He loves it. Smiling ear to ear. Now, I mentioned the friendship. You and Sean Reed are really good friends, and it looks like it's going to be a Vic Esposito Sean Reed battle again here, Pro Mod 2008. Yeah, it sure looks that way. Um, he started out the same as last year, he won the first two races. And uh, I'm a hundred. I think I'm around behind him. Uh, again, this race we've outqualified him, but I'd rather be in his shoes right now. He had a, a well. He has two more wins than we do, and another hundred points, I think. Well, there's another little battle going on, and it's a battle to get a motor back because you have such a big heart. You're such a good friend. You actually loaned your friend Gary Bauer that engine over there that's causing you a little bit of problem. I'm not really sure exactly how I'm going to get it back from him, but we'll work on something after the next round, maybe. And, of course, he said that because Gary Bauer qualified number one with that engine. And, of course, Vic Esposito loaned him. If there is such a thing as a good thing for Vic, at least they're on opposite sides of the ladder. If they meet in competition, it couldn't possibly be till the final. Gary Bauer and Terry Kane are first matchup in round number one. And this is a big one because, as we know, the winner here, Ken, gets a solo in the next round. Whoever wins this match will run in the final. And Bauer with a spectacular 026 light out. Oh, Kane with problems in the far lane has to get out of the throttle. And then look at Bauer, follows that up with a 7 0 pass. Bauer's been solid all weekend long. Terry Kane has had nothing but handling issues with this. Let's take a look at the super clean super shot. Watch the boat on the right side of the screen. Right there, it looks okay, but now it's going to start blowing the tail, and the prop tries to come around. The boat gets way out of shape. You got two choices, three choices. You can hit the pole. That would have been an automatic disqualification, but the race was over anyway. Gary Bauer doing exactly what you did, almost uh, Superman-like, a .026 reaction time. Yeah, my best all weekend. Uh, not sure that I really needed it here, probably need it in the future, but uh, I'll take it. I saw Vic Esposito when he came out of the water. You're running his borrowed motor. Did he have any more to say to you? Uh, just take it easy on it. He's, he's ready to get it back about now. <laughs> So spectacular job for Bauer. That would be good for a bye run in round number two. That should get him right to the final round. Who will he meet there? Well, we'll find out. We'll go to work on that right now. Ryan Baxter will face Sean Reed, the defending Division I champ. Remember, all these boats that are still left in competition now, we're in the 7-0 range in qualifying. The starting line is a premium right here. Capsules down, and here we go. Big time move, Baxter on the starting line, and let's see if Ryan can hold that off to the finish line. I do believe Baxter is going to go on 7.08 on a hole shot to a 7.07. .07. Ryan Baxter and that crazy crew with a bottoms up boat doing a spectacular job. Now, courtesy of our Greater Austin Development replay, let's take another look at it. 
Baxter got the light, and that was the key. When Sean Reed was so late standing on the gas, even though his boat performed better, he's going to cross the finish line second, and his day is done. Been talking an awful lot about reaction time. How about the reaction time for Ryan Baxter this afternoon? Point zero nine nine. Not your best reaction time, but good enough to beat Sean Reed. Yeah, he was just late, that's all. <laughs> when you line up against a guy like Sean Reed, defending champion, what's going through your mind when you're on the rope? Uh, got a good light. And <laughs> got to get in the O's, both, both O's. When you came out, out, out of the out ramp, everybody was down here. It looked like a little mini champagne celebration. I know you're a low-key guy, but that's a big deal to knock out Sean Reed. Oh, yeah, everybody in Pro Mods wanting him beat. He's undefeated this year, so it felt good to beat him. <laughs> Rather run him than anybody. Pro Modified Round 1 action continues one final pair here, and that will feature Vic Esposito and Steve Radjic. Vic Esposito qualifying in that number two spot. Vic Esposito's got a chance to make some points here, as you heard. The point leader out in round number one, so this is a very important round. And this one's over at the starting line by a tenth of a second. Steve wasn't even close. He fouls out. That may have been a lucky break for Vic Esposito because he was a little late on the tree. 126 is not your standard light, and 711 is definitely not the number you're trying to run. Always fun to talk with Vic Esposito. An easy run on a red light from Rajic. What was going through your mind up there? Uh... Well, Tara, first thing I want to do is plug my cousin from Napa Auto Parts in Clovis and surrounding areas. He's the one that paid for our going uh, this weekend, so he made it possible for us to race this weekend. So I want to really say thank you. Uh, going out there, the starting line, I had left, and I uh, felt a little, I wasn't sure what the feeling, a different feeling, like the clutch was slipping or something. And um, <clears throat> then I looked over, and I saw that um, Ray Jack was in front of us. And at that point, I'd never see anybody in front of me. At the starting line, anyway, I mean, I've seen people in front of me quite often, but at the starting, we have the lightest boat there is, so usually we're, we're out there. I got a little nervous, and I'm calling back in the radios trying to find out if he red lit, and my uh, guys on shore said he didn't red light, so I was really actually surprised to find out that I had won. I thought I lost. Bottom line is, if you can go all the way to the finals here today, win the finals, you can leave with the points lead. Yeah, one step at a time. We're bringing you all the action here from Chow Chilla and High Definition here on Speed. Up next, Top Fuel Hydro, 7,000 horsepower propelling these monsters across the quarter mile. These things are a handful, Alan. And it was a wild weekend for the Top Fuel Hydros. In qualifying, we saw some crazy rides and only one run over 200 miles an hour. So Mark Workentine will take a bye run in the opener. But before we get to the starting line, let's go behind the scenes. Hanging out with Eddie Knox and Rex Childress and the Problem Child. And let's just be honest, Eddie, in the last year or so, it's been the cavalcade of drivers since the big horrific crash with Dale Shamira. But it looks like you might have settled on a long-term driver. Yeah, we're very fortunate. You know, we went, uh, had a couple different guys driving the boat, and it's an all-new program this year. And a whole new hull set up, new design for us. And we're very fortunate that uh, Rex come along and was able to, to drive for us. Uh, we, we look forward to this being a kind of a long-term deal. And uh, so far, we're get along pretty well he's been widely known as one of the best drivers out here and uh, hopefully we'll give him the boat to win as a team owner that's got to give you a little bit of comfort oh it does so far everything's been great uh, there's a lot of good feedback from the drivers what is what i need to make the boat run and uh, right now i think we got a good a chance to win uh, we came here to kind of test but uh, boats running really well we keep it in the groove um, look out we're going to take this thing let me ask you, Rex, you've been around a long time. You certainly have known Eddie. Are the rumors true, what we've heard about Eddie being, you know, a really tough boss? Well, no, he's actually a really cool guy to hang out with. That, but they don't call him Fast Eddie for nothing. I mean, all his stuff is uh, world class and hauls butt. And I, uh, this is an awesome opportunity for me to, to get in something of this caliber, especially with Centurion Boats and Larry Bless and, and Eddie. And, and the, the crew is awesome, and uh, they're, they're giving me a pretty awesome piece to drive. So I, I, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's interesting. They keep talking about the performance of the boat, but they didn't make a full run in qualifying. Oh, Larry Bless also, by the way, a key name in there as a boat owner. We'll take a look at the ladder there. You know, there's another plus to having Rex Childers on your team as well. He's one of the best chefs you'll ever meet. The guy cooks an awesome dinner, and of course, all the crew members love that. He'll line up next to Glenn Wilson, and Glenn Wilson, also a longtime Top Fuel Hydro competitor. Capsule's down, and we're set to go. First pair, round one. 
Childers really had that thing flying on the start line, but then it settles in it. Did something fly off that boat? Whoa, hang on. Crossing the center stripe, that's past the finish line though, so we won't be DQ'd for that. But that thing definitely grenaded right there at the very end. It looks like it's taken on water in the back as well. The Centurion boat's just about to go under and he opens up the castle lid. He needs to get out of there pretty quickly or he'll go down with it. Well, keep in mind, the drivers do have oxygen. You see the hose hooked up to the helmet. They've got an air supply, so if he was in the capsule, he'd be okay. But I think he just wanted out of it. He's gotten out of the boat, but uh, I'm not sure that boat's going to come back and race again today. Tough break there for him. And it looks like Glenn Wilson with a fair share of problems himself as he tries to get a little water up on that one. Looks like he grenaded that one and set it on fire. But Glenn Wilson looked like a fire with his boat. Rex Childress has got a boat that's sinking, and the IHBA rescue guys have to make a choice. Well, one boat went to Rex and one went to Glenn. That's the right choice. Those guys are all over. It's always awesome to have them out there, and there's every driver out there loves to see the IHBA rescue. Great look right here in this replay. Big wheel stand, dual wheels back there, twin prop, of course, really launched him. A spectacular run, 480, but that's when it went wrong. 236 miles an hour, the back of that thing falls down on the water. Typically, they would crash right there, but that one hung on pretty nicely in a bad situation. Wow, what a crazy first run of Top Fuel Hydro. Rex Childers, first off, soaking wet. I saw the capsule pop, the boat's going down. Barely got out in time. Yeah, we, you know, I'm not sure what went wrong, but uh, we damn near had a collision with those guys at the end, and uh, something, something came off the boat. We're not sure yet what it is until they drag it up here, but uh, it, was, it was going right down Broadway, hauling up, and when I tried to shut it off, that's when it kind of got stupid. Let me ask you, Eddie, what were you hearing from his radio? <laughs> something in the, the fashion of a holy... Uh, it was a pretty exciting run. The boat was really trucking through there. It ran a 480 on its first pass, and uh, he got out and was pulling away, and we're not sure. We've seen something reflective fly off the back of the boat right as the chute's deployed, and uh, unfortunately, you know, obviously the boat changed lanes and sunk. Uh, we're real happy with the new design of the hull, and like to thank Centurion Boats and Bullet Fiberglass for building a really safe piece. Most instances like that, when you lose hardware off the boat, they're, they're going to tip over, and the boat did what it was supposed to do. It settled down, turned right, uh, you know, got his attention, just wrecked all our stuff, but um, with any luck, we'll get it back, dry it out, and get into the final round. Sounds like a lot of work. When we come back, it'll be the Pro Mod semifinals. Welcome back to T-Shirts Unlimited Super Nationals here at the Brenda Reservoir in Chowchilla, California on a very, very hot day. Pro Modified Round 2, and again, these guys are trying to run as close to that 7-second mark as possible without going under. There's a look at Gary Bauer, of course, we talked about him getting that bye run into the final. But first, we'll show you this pair, Ryan Baxter and Vic Esposito. Ryan Baxter, who in the first round was in the 708 range. Vic Esposito, we talked about the fact his light was a little slow, his boat was a little slow. Let's see if he can step it up here. Not going to have to. Baxter this time pulled with the red lights on, and he fouls away his shot at the trophy. Esposito, that's back in the neighborhood, 7008 at 161. 56 thousandths package right there. A pretty good job in Pro Mod. Here's another look at it. You see backs are just leaving a little too early, but man, on the right side of the screen, a picture-perfect run. Vic Esposito and his team made the right adjustments. They got the light back where they want it. They got the boat right on that seven flat index. He's going to be tough in the final round, and remember, he's racing against his own power plant. Putting the Vic in victory is Vic Esposito, a .048 reaction and a 7.008. How good is that? That's pretty good, I'll be honest with you, yeah. Yeah, we're real happy about that. Uh, you know, we played around, bounced around a little bit earlier, um, but we're happy, we just kept with it. Mission today is for you to leave here with, I think you can leave with a 12-point lead going into the next round. Is that what it is, 12 points? That close? I, I think it's that close. Well, that's our goal then. Let's leave with 12 points ahead. I mean, I don't care if we're one point ahead, as long as we're uh, in that number one spot. Pro Modified Round 2, and of course, this will be the single, the buy run here for Gary Bauer. There are times when lane choice and drag boat racing are critical. Today, it's pretty nice out here. Not much of a current, not much wind, so it looks like it could just be a nice, smooth run for him. The question is, does he hit it hard, or does he just idle through? Well, considering that he doesn't own the motor, there's no reason not to hit it hard. Remember, he was the number one qualifier at 7-0. 
and hit it hard. He did. Matter of fact, it sounded like it blubbered right there at the very end. How about dead on with a two? All but perfect. You know, when Vic Esposito ran just a few seconds ago, how about a 7.008? Gary Bauer running Vic Esposito's engine has to go one better. 7.002. Yeah, it was a pretty good number. What can I say about Vic? Uh, he's one of my best friends, and for somebody to loan me their motor, uh, for me to go out here and run it hard all weekend, uh, I, I, there's not any words I can really say to express my thanks to him. And when you go back to the pit, seriously, it's you guys heads up, final round. He wins, he goes into the points lead. You win, you beat him with one of his motors. What's the, what's the correct uh, order of merit at that point? Do you buy dinner? <laughs> uh, I, I probably owe him a lot more than that. I, Vic's an excellent racer, he's been doing it a long time. I'm going to do my best to beat him, even though it is his own motor, because uh, I haven't ever won a, an event, so I'm going to give it all I got. We're going to see how it all plays out. Two Esposito engines going head to head, coming up. Pro Modified Finals coming at you. Two very good friends we've been talking about it the entire show. Gary Bauer, of course, and Vic Esposito. And you know what? That's what these guys want to do. Vic Esposito will loan him an engine because he wants to go out and race and race hard. You think this is the place where you repay the favor when you get into the final round? I mean, Vic's counting points. I don't think so. I think, you like Gary Bauer said, I think Bauer wants to go out here and win his first ever. The butterflies went wide open, but Bauer's boat never went anywhere. Vic Esposito's boat red lit. Now the count is on. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. He is not going to make it. You have to break the starting line beam within five seconds. Esposito might not know it, but even with the red light, he won this race. How about that? Two thousandths of a second. You think Vic wasn't going for that one? Are you kidding me? Vic Esposito comes out of here the champion. Let's paint it for you. You red light, you think, oh, my day is done. Gary Bauer doesn't break the beam within five seconds. Could it get any more freak showish than that? Boy, you got you hit it right on the head. I knew I read that. I, I went by. I was a little aggressive on the lights because uh, he's right on the number, and I didn't want to be a slouch. And um, as I went through, I saw I brought the light on. So I don't know if you guys caught. I took my foot out of it, and then I, after a few feet, I'm thinking to myself. Hey, where's he at? So I stepped on it the rest of the way. I'm not really sure why. I just wanted to get past the finish line at that point. And uh, after I came in, I knew I had been out there quite a long time. So when I flipped up the hood, I just saw Gary at about, I don't know, maybe 300 feet. And the, that rule came into my mind that he didn't start making in time. So... I'll take it any way I can get it. Steal it, whatever it takes. Well, you know what? Here's a good thing. That's a three-peat. Three years in a row, winning here in Chowchilla. Now, the flip side of that is, is there a problem with that Vic Esposito racing engine that you loaned to your friend Gary Bauer? Uh, I don't have any problems with it. He's got a problem with it. It's coming out this afternoon. <laughs> but, uh, no, i got to give a lot of credit to Dennis Hemfeld. He's the engineer and the, the think tank on the numbers over the radio and all the stuff that we're cramming. Uh, and my crew, Mitch Crawford, Luca Brazzi, my wife, Christine, uh, Michael and uh, Michelle, and uh, Bill Rebus, the guy that helped me build this boat, and um, guy's a boat guru. Bottom line, you're leaving here. Points leader next round. Yep. Thank you very much. Congrats to Vic Esposito, good friend. He will be on top of the points, as you can see here, followed by Sean Reed, and then Gary Bauer rounds out the top three. And the finals here in Top Fuel Hydro, are to feature Rex Childers and Mark Workentine. Rex Childers, though, and that team, obviously, with a lot of work, Alan. And they just flat couldn't get it done. When you sink a top fuel hydro, then you have to get it out of the lake. Then you have to take it back, figure out what went wrong in the first place, on top of all your original maintenance. They just flat ran out of time. So Mark is going to take a solo here for the championship. Stands on it hard right there, slings the blower belt off, and ironically enough, it was Rex Childers who piloted that boat for Jay Hartunian for a number of years, but it's going to be Mark Workentine who gets the win in it here today. 519 at only 180-some miles an hour after the belt came off, and how about this for a greater Austin development recap on Ford at Top Fuel Hydro. Doing some steering in there, a lot of right rudder in that thing. Finally hung on, man, what a ride. I'll tell you what, Mark Workentine said it best when you said, hey, we won in qualifying yesterday. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, we came out first round in the morning yesterday and laid down a nice pass. You know, it was, Bo was working good, it ran good. I had to <clears throat> manhandle it a little bit, but I got it through there and did the job and brought it back, and that set us up perfect for today, and it's unfortunate what happened to the problem child today. 
we didn't want to win like this, but like I said, we won it yesterday in qualifying, and I'm proud of all the guys, and it's been awesome working with Jay for the first time this weekend. It's been a blast. Jay, let me ask you, man, as the owner, we asked you earlier today, you didn't have to make a really a run. All you had to do was break the starting lights on the top end of the racetrack. You said, no, nope, we're going to make a run. You had a little bit of damage, then lost the blower belt, but all in all, pretty solid run. Yeah, it, it was really hooking up. I heard it went 207 to the half track. It took a really nice set and was marching. I thought we had a real strong 480, 490 run. Mark did an awesome job. Everybody came together and put this thing together for us. And, and being here at the hometown deal, we weren't going to just break the beam and take the money. We're going to on a show so just thank everybody for coming out it's great to have mark back inside of a top fuel hydro with us leading in the points is rex childers and he's followed by jared Silby. let's take a look at our sportsman winners chuck armand and river racer took home the trophy brett reinke and stock eliminator and modified eliminator went to rick beretta and top eliminator ralph richardson pro eliminator alan forsyth and pro comp eliminator brad perrick Hope you had a great time. We had some beautiful pictures and high definition right here on Speed. For Terry Boyd and Alan Reinhardt, I'm Ken Stout. This show's been produced by Lucas Oil Studios.